Let me play this soundbite from Joe Biden yesterday. It's SOP 41. If your team came back and showed you data that she would fare better against former President Donald Trump, would you reconsider your decision to stay in the race? No, unless they came back and said, there's no way you can win. Me. No one's saying that. No poll says that. <laughs> no poll yeah, says I'm, I'm says laughing at the, 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 the secret. The secret is, is a little <laughs> weird, but the whispering. No poll says there's no way he can win. Well, I think that's true, right? I mean, I haven't seen a poll. That, no polls would say there's no way. The, the question is trying to read what's out there and determine likelihoods with the understanding that we have four months to go. So, I mean, if the Biden team called you in there and said, just give us, a, give it to us straight, what is the likelihood at this point, based on what you're seeing, that he can win, what would you say? Slim, slim. Uh, you know, again, it comes down to Georgia and Arizona. Tell me what the game plan is to turn one of those states around. And then you've got so much pressure on this firewall that, as we said, even if like a New England state like New Hampshire and a Western state like uh, Nevada switch it, you know, swings, then even the firewall isn't enough to hold it together. And then you're going to have. So it's slim right now. I'm not saying it's over. But when you look at where he was four years ago, it's a totally different match. And we can't pretend like it's the same board that we're playing on. And, you know, the opinions are a lot different today than they were four years ago. And he's got a lot of ground to make up from where he was even maybe six months ago. And a lot of this is so baked in that the question is, how do you shake it up to move this electorate? You know, we watched the debate. And as I said, only a couple of point shifts in like three states, three states didn't move at all. So what happens if he had a miraculous, you know, great debate where, you know, maybe he floats on air. I don't know if he would even move the needle, you know, two or three points more. So the question is, how do you shake up the race right now, which seems to be pretty strong in the Trump camp in these key swing states. I'll tell you what, if I were a Democrat in charge of elections, I'd be speaking with Jack Smith right now because I don't believe this, but they believe that the lawfare will make a difference. And I would be telling him, slim down that indictment right now to only the things Trump said would not be immune, refile it. Judge Chutkin's going to put us on the rocket docket and get us a trial super fast. And if we can't get him convicted by November, we'll get him convicted before January 6th and the certification. We'll make the case that you can't swear in a convicted felon on a January 6th type federal felony. Like that's that's a Hail Mary. That's what I'd be doing if I were on their team. Yeah, that's that's a stretch. I don't know. I mean, we'll see, uh, obviously, November 5th, if the legal challenges were a good plan for the Democrats. There seems to be some backlash to all of these court proceedings. Even Trump's conviction, you had Democrats asking for a pardon, which, you know, raises an eyebrow about how they feel about these cases. So I'm not sure if that's the, the way to go. Maybe some outside intervening event. Um, Wait, what President do you mean Trump, even Trump's conviction? You had Democrats asking for a pardon. I think uh, the candidate that ran for uh, president uh, out of Minnesota, um, he asked for Biden to pardon Trump. Oh, oh Dean Phillip. Yeah, saying he, he should pardon him. Right, right, right. OK. You know, that's a Democrat running for president saying, you know, you would think that's like the base who are like, yeah, throw him in prison. And he's stepping back as a more moderate wing. That shows you that there's some divide within the party on the issue of, of what to do with the former president uh, mm -hmm. on, on those legal challenges. So I don't know if it was necessarily a home run hit to, to move forward with all of those uh, plays. Obviously, we'll find out November 5th. Um, because yeah, the exit polling, we'll, we'll ask about it. All right. So now the the Democrat Party is spending every waking hour trying to figure out, if not Biden, then who could be who could be Trump? And you did do some polling on that. Um, this, I mean, what I see here is no one. <laughs> that's, that's, that's what I'm seeing from your, your, your polling. Um, I'll read the numbers. So it shows Trump up by three in the national poll over Biden, up by six over Kamala Harris, up by six over Bernie Sanders, up by five over Al Gore. Al Gore is polling better than Kamala Harris. Wow. Up by seven over Hillary Clinton, up by eight over Gavin Newsom, up by 10 over Pete Buttigieg, 
up by 10 over Elizabeth Warren, up by 10 over Gretchen Whitmer, up by eight over uh, Josh Shapiro. That's pretty much everyone. Um, so what, how do they go into Joe Biden and say you should resign? If I'm Joe Biden, I'm looking at the Emerson poll saying, who's better than I am? And, and I think that's what you heard last night. But I think in those numbers, and I'm glad that you brought them up, Megan, because let me explain what's happening. These candidates are unannounced. And so when I put them into these ballot tests, what we're seeing is these younger voters, they're only breaking for Biden by 12. They're totally split with these uh, other candidates because they don't know who they are. And so I do think that there isn't like a you know magic bullet in, in, in this group that's going to change the trajectory immediately. But I think if you rallied around one of these candidates, you could have a star in that mix, somebody who might be able to shake up the campaign and change the dynamics. Uh, some candidates that looked interesting was Governor Shapiro out of Pennsylvania. He was pulling a little bit more from that youth vote than what we saw out of the other candidates. But they all start so far behind on name recognition that Biden, the president's in a strong place to be able to argue that they're weak because they are. But if you gave them three months of campaigning, I think you could see a different uh, type of ballot test between them and Trump than what we're seeing right now with Biden. Now, it could go in the other direction where the bottom falls out on the Democrats and they say, well, you, we like President Biden, but we don't like any of these horses. And you see it go to Trump or a third party. So, you know, it's not an easy decision to make. It's never been made. I mean, Johnson is the first one to drop out, but he drops out in March, uh, March 31st of 68. And then you had Kennedy and I mean, yeah, Kennedy in there who gets assassinated. So that's 68. You know, it's a weird cycle as well. Uh, you know, incumbent president Jimmy Carter, he was able to sustain Ted Kennedy's push in 1980. Um, and that's what they asked him about voting your conscience last night, because that comes out of the convention where uh, that's what Kennedy wanted out of the voters. We'll see if the convention is a moment for the Democrats to shake up the race or We'll see if maybe Biden is right that all the polling is off five or six points. If you weren't following the news, a massive hit to the U.S. dollar just came in June when Saudi Arabia did not renew its 50-year petrodollar deal with the U.S. Since 1974, Saudi Arabia has sold oil exclusively in U.S. dollars, and that was huge to America's global economic dominance. Now they want options other than the dollar. So ask yourself, if there's less demand for the dollar, what happens next? Look, it's reasons like this that Americans are looking at Birch Gold Group. For over 20 years, Birch Gold has helped tens of thousands of Americans protect their savings by converting an IRA or 401k into an IRA in physical gold. To learn more, text the word MK to 989898 and claim your free, no obligation info kit on gold. That's MK to the number 989898. Birch Gold has earned the trust of many with their education-first approach, their thousands of happy customers, and so many five-star reviews. Consider protecting your savings with gold before the dollar plunges any further. Text MK to 989898 today. Thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.